So there was one trial that was arguably positive in small cell this year, looking at serafinib as a maintenance therapy. We have not seen the details of it. It hasn't been presented yet. It's the last presentation of the meeting, I think. And it's the concept of giving a maintenance therapy for this population of extensive disease small cell lung cancer patients who often respond very well, but invariably will progress. And unfortunately, at the time of progression, it tends to be much harder to treat. I believe that the study shows a progression-free survival benefit and not, at this point, a significant overall survival benefit. Is that enough to change practice, or do you think that in the maintenance setting, whether for non-small cell or for small cell lung cancer, we need to have overall survival as a significant difference before adding in an ongoing maintenance therapy? Uh, Nate, what are your thoughts here? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this has actually been shown before with topo uh, yeah. was given in the maintenance setting in prolonged progression-free survival or time to progression or something, but not overall survival. And, and it didn't lead to a sea change. It didn't lead to a, a real sea change. Uh, the problem with this is small cell is such a tough disease to treat, and these patients often are very kind of sick when they present, and you give them chemotherapy, which can be fairly tough, although it, the, most of the patients will respond. And so when you finally finish that, and they've responded, and you've finished your therapy, I would say it's a relative minority of patients in my mind that I feel fit that maintenance. Like, so non-small cell, you always look at the patient, and if they're beaten up, they need a break. I would say a large proportion of my small cell patients wouldn't be candidates for maintenance therapy if you use that as your definition anyway. Unless we had some non-toxic therapy. Yeah, if you had a non-toxic therapy, but I don't know if how many, uh, you know, serafinib is not something we commonly use in, in lung cancer, but I've used it a little bit, and I'm not, it's not the easiest drug to give. No. So it's not completely benign from a, from a toxicity standpoint. And especially if, you know, if you could say, well, I know that at least you're going to live longer. There will clearly be patients that are going to be willing to put up with the toxicity. But if all you're doing is just delaying it coming back a little bit more, but you're trading off that potential one last moment of feeling good where you can actually go off and do something, I really wouldn't be, it wouldn't be something I'd be optimistic about using. Mary, what do you think about the implications? Yeah, I really agree. You know, and, and there is also that population of small cell patients who have a prolonged disease-free interval. And I think you'd be doing a huge disservice to those patients by putting them on a toxic drug. You don't know who those patients are going to be when you start. And I see patients get so much value out of that time off treatment. So, And I agree, I think serafinib is not a benign drug. And I, I would have a hard time without a survival benefit really pushing that. Yeah, I think that, that it was really the survival benefit that changed the argument in maintenance non-small cell lung cancer because we had some trials like with docetaxel, with taxotir, where you saw a significant progression-free survival benefit, not a significant overall survival difference, but it was a challenging drug, and it, it did not move the needle that much because we do have this trade-off, and you'd like to at least see a convincing overall survival difference before having patients you know, right. r receive additional challenging therapy. Right. Well, thanks very much. I really appreciate being joined today by Drs. Nate Pinnell and Mary Pinder. And I also would like to thank Longevity Foundation for working with Grace Global Resource for advancing cancer education to bring the whole meeting, at least a glimpse of it, uh, straight from ASCO to patients and caregivers and other providers. Thanks very much. Take care. <laughs>